touch on a very familiar story. Um, those of you who watched the teaser video, you probably read ahead, but it's, a, it's the, actually it's the end. The day's passage is actually the end of a very familiar story. The story is the fall of mankind, and most of us are familiar with the story of Adam and Eve. Now, I once had a woman ask me why I thought there was so many bad things going on in the world. And I answered, I said, the fall of mankind, the original sin in the garden. There are bad things in the world because of sin. Then she said, so you blame women for the situation of the world? I said, yeah. <laughs> no, of course I did not say that. <laughs> I will say she caught me off guard with that statement, uh, but I said, no, both Adam and Eve ate of the fruit. But you could almost tell that she thought the original sin was all of Eve's fault and that women were being held accountable. So that brings up some interesting thoughts, and I'm going to we'll lay them out today as we go over some of the background of this story. But what I also found interesting is how much Adam and Eve are so much like us. I will lay out why I think that's still true today. And given the same choices, I think people would probably make the same choices that Adam and Eve made. I would almost say it's human nature. And of course, free will gives us options to also make bad choices. That's some of the things we have with free will. So the passage I picked out, um, I'm actually going to cover most of Genesis 3, but we're going to look at Genesis 3, verses 21 to 24. So Genesis chapter 3, verses 21 to 24. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, This man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the Lord banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Now this is a passage of Adam and Eve being banished from the Garden of Eden. And the Garden of Eden was pretty much um, like heaven on earth. There's a nice little uh, interesting Bible trivia thing. Because if you ask most people when the first killing in Scripture was, they'll say Cain and Abel. But the actual first killing is when God killed the animal to make garments of skin for Adam and Eve. So that's a nice little Bible trivia thing. Notice I didn't say murder. First murder is Cain and Abel. The first killing, because uh, Adam and Eve made the fig leaf things, and God said, ah, I can do a little better than that, and gave them garments of skin. But, so if you ever get in a little Bible trivia or you want to stump friends, you know, at a party or whatever, there you go. But so this is pretty much, you know, Adam and Eve being banished from the Garden of Eden. A Garden of Eden was like heaven on earth. Adam and Eve didn't want for anything. They had, pr they had plenty of food and water. They were safe and secure. They didn't have to labor or work. They were pretty much set when they were in the garden. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, Adam was already created by God, and God told Adam that he was free to eat from any tree in the garden except from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So any other tree he could eat from, but not the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the actual warning and instruction was given to Adam. And it was also the first time that mankind really knew they had an option or a choice that they could make. I guess you could say he knew he could eat it from any of the other trees, so that gave him choices. But he basically had his first don't. This is what you don't do. Now, if we could say that Eve didn't actually hear the instruction from God about the tree, and so it wasn't truly her fault for being tempted by Satan in the form of a certain serpent. We could say maybe Adam didn't tell her, so it was Adam's fault. But of course, that would not be accurate. 
when the serpent started tempting Eve in Genesis chapter 3, Eve responds that God said, you must not eat from the fruit, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You must not touch it or you will die. So it's pretty obvious that Eve was instructed about staying away from the tree. She does not mention that it was a tree of knowledge of good and evil. She just says the tree in the middle of the garden. Now Satan knows which tree though because Satan calls it by name and he says if you eat of this tree of knowledge of good and evil that your eyes would be opened up. The fruit was appealing to Eve and she ate of the fruit and she gave it to Adam and he too ate of the fruit. So now we have sin. Sin has entered the world. The sin is disobedience to God or turning away from God's instructions. Adam and Eve immediately knew that they did wrong because when God enters the garden, Adam and Eve hid. Now, they hadn't hid before, so now they chose to hid. And when God finds them, they said they hid because they were naked. If you look in chapter 2, it says they were naked. So, notice, they had always been naked. But it wasn't until the aid of the tree of knowledge of good and evil that they realized that they were naked. Because now they knew they are naked, God knows that they have disobeyed. Because they wouldn't have known before. And since they disobeyed and they sinned, they needed to go. They gots to go. So, Scripture is consistent. It says that God cannot be in the presence of sin. You see that throughout Scripture. And since Eden was heaven on earth, Adam and Eve could no longer be in heaven because they had sinned. They could no longer be in God's presence because they had sinned. So the passage that I read is Adam and Eve basically being banished. Once because they sinned, and secondly because they could no longer be allowed to eat from the tree of life. The tree of life would have allowed them to live forever in the garden. It would have given them eternal life, eternal life in the garden with the Father in the presence of God. But because they have sinned, they can no longer be in the presence of God. And but, but since the, be, they became sinful, they were no longer allowed to eat from the tree of life. So a guardian cherub, which is a mighty angel with a flaming sword... Um, was, was put in place to guard the entrance and to protect, protect the tree of life. The story of Adam and Eve is really the story of a broken relationship with God. If we want to figure out, you know, we say the fall of mankind, we say sin entered the world, but it's really talking about relationship. Everything on our spiritual journey is about a relationship with God. Our personal relationship with God. And we look at the story of Adam and Eve, we need to look at it as a story of a broken relationship. And it's a story that takes place in the world every day. People choose to turn away from God or disobey God and break that relationship. And they, when they break that relationship, they're turning away from that possibility of eternal life with the Lord. People like to blame Adam and Eve for bringing sin into the world, but the world has not stopped sinning since. Adam and Eve broke that relationship with God in three ways. And see if these ways kind of sound familiar. See if you've heard this kind of stuff happening in today's world. Maybe you'll hear some of these in your own life. First, they became convinced that their way was better than God's way. How many of us choose to do something because we thought it was the better choice for us? Even though it may go against what God teaches in Scripture. If we have made those choices personally, then we kind of said we thought our way was better than God's way. 
Same thing Adam and Eve did. Second, they became self-conscious and hid. How many of us have done things that we knew were wrong and tried to hide it or cover it up? It is a very common theme throughout the lives of many people. Interesting thing happened this week. Um, I was dusting the house and my wife got these scentsy things. Do you know what scentsy things are? Melted plastic that just smells. Okay. Um, so, and the one of them basically is, you know, is a, is a house with a roof and the scentsy things underneath. And it, so when I went to pick it up, the roof came off. The, the scentsy thing on the inside fell out. I let out a oops, but it fell into a box in which there was papers. So nothing broke. But let's just say it made some noise. So then when I went upstairs, Sue said, what happened? I said, nothing as far as you know. <laughs> she goes, what's broke? I said, nothing you would be able to find. Then she's, for some reason, she kept quizzing me. I didn't understand why. <laughs> so I finally had to tell her what happened. But so the whole idea of trying to hide it or cover it up, we may be guilty of that every now and then. So, um, so secondly, that was that second uh, thing that Adam and Eve did. Thirdly, they tried to excuse or defend themselves. They tried to defer responsibility to the serpent who tricked them. Adam even tried to throw Eve under the bus. Says, hey, she ate of the fruit and gave it to me. When they really needed to realize it was their fault. We hear all the time in today's world where people don't want to own up to their own mistakes. But instead they try to push blame onto someone else. They try to make excuses for what they've done. Those are three ways in which Adam and Eve broke their relationship with God. And they are the same ways that people continue to break their relationship with God today. Those same ways that they throw, the same ways they throw away eternity with the Father in heaven. It is so like us that we don't learn from the mistakes of those who came before us. The world certainly has not learned from Adam and Eve. How many of us try to teach our children from our mistakes so they don't make the same mistakes that we do? And how many of you watched your children make the same mistakes that you did? Sometimes they need to burn their hand before they realize something's hot. So we, we try to prepare. And so we, as the human uh, race, continue to make the same choices and the same mistakes that Adam and Eve. For us to truly build a, up a relationship with God, we need to reverse the steps that Adam and Eve did. We must drop our excuses and our self-defenses and fully confess to God and take responsibility for our actions. We need to repent. We must stop trying to hide from God, but instead walk lives that are fully in the light of what God has taught us. And we must become convinced that God's ways are better than our ways. If we take those three steps, that's the process of getting back in the, into relationship with God. Part of our personal journey, part of our growth is understanding all the ways we need to build and fix and patch our relationship with God. It is a path that many will choose not to take, but is a choice, and it's a choice that we have to freely make. It won't make your life carefree and easy, but it will give your life meaning and purpose. I titled my sermon today, So Like Us, talking about how we make the same choices Adam and Eve made all the time, but it doesn't have to be that way. We can start today by giving our life to Jesus and start re rebuilding that relationship with God. But as always, that choice has to be ours. 
We see the fall of Adam and Eve and them being banished from the garden in Genesis chapter 3. They gave up eternal life with the garden, in the garden with God because they thought they knew better. And when it fell apart, they tried to make excuses. Their relationship with God was broken because we were all born into a sinful world and not the Garden of Eden. Our relationship with God was already broken. But God has given us all a chance to rebuild that relationship through His Son, Jesus Christ. It is nothing that we earned or deserved, but a gift that God has given us because he wants to have that relationship with us again. That choice is ours. He is waiting. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, when we look at a, a familiar story that maybe some have heard multiple times, maybe those who've read it, discussed it, but maybe didn't realize how we continue to make those same bad choices that Adam and Eve made. It's easy to point fingers and say, why did they do that? If they wouldn't have done that, mankind wouldn't have, you know, brought sin into the world. But we continue to make those same choices, those same bad decisions, the same disobedience of God on a regular basis. So how can we point our fingers at Adam and Eve and say, and not notice the hypocrite, hip, hip, <laughs> Hippo, whatever. You know what I mean. How can we not see how we're just being um, judgmental and hypocrites? There we go. Uh, Lord, I know you called me to preach, but you didn't make me a great speaker. My tongue gets twisted often, but may your message be clear. Guide us, Lord, that we can represent you and give us the strength to glorify you. In your precious and holy name, amen.